Shit, baby. Welcome back to the, the Scopes Podcast, special Q&A episode. My boy Luke is joining me here, but first of all, I'd like to introduce our new sponsors, Flow State, Flow State Coffee. Uh, it's Australia's first smart coffee infused with nootropics and superfoods, which is good for your brain. Uh, we need plenty of that here at, at YKTR Sports. You're all about that. You need a flow state in the morning. I've been, I've been lacking. It. No, to be fair, um, we've been getting after it. For a, we've been uh, in contact with these guys for a, for a minute. We've been getting after it. Probably seen on a few of our stories. Uh, I could definitely vouch for it, and uh, that's what we got them on board. It's obviously, like I said, because we know them. They're, they're Australian owned and manufactured, so we're keeping it in house, baby. What's up? Yeah, hundred. And uh, it's uh, the the best part about it is uh, it's next level coffee coffee that helps you get after it, baby. What's up? Mm. About that life. Follow. They sponsor a few of Aussie UFC fighters, George Cambosis, Aussie boxer. Yeah, they're about that life. Like, keep telling everyone. So proud to have them on board. Uh, big shout out to Flow State Coffee, one of the you know one of one of the first sponsors for the Scopes podcast. So Here we go. Appreciate it, baby. On the ladder, baby. Let's go. So we're gonna hit the hit hit. The, yeah, there we go. What's up? <laughs> we can't hear it. We can't hear it now. So we'll, uh, this is where I do my best work, baby. Shit. Here we go. Shit, baby. Ready for the Q&A. Let's go. Q&A. Uh, footy ones first. Is, yep. is Cam Smith unfairly hammered by the media and your Cam Smith story? Um, yeah, so the, there's two separate questions. But I just chucked them into one. Um, Cam Smith, obviously, I think it just comes with the position that he's been in the game. He's played that long. He's done so much that they find ways to bring down. Like, it's, it's only natural. Like, even when stuff happens with, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about NFL. Like, you know, they try to come after Brady mm. in any which way they can. It happens to all the elite sports stars. It says a lot about who he is and, and um, you know, what he means to the game that he continually bees a story. It's a, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty cool story rolling in the grand final on the weekend. I just found out too um, a couple of days ago, I think it might have been Roasty posted it, that mm. – the one thing he's never won is the Clive Churchill. Yeah, I saw Bruh, that. He's 480. That's fucked up. Is that like, a bit of jam? Shh. I'm on money, baby. We'll course, get to that. We'll, know, get, we'll, get down the, we'll get down the line. But uh, um, yeah, that's that's crazy. Uh, Cam Smith's story for me uh, being such a big week, potentially, you know, re- retiring after if they can get the dub. Um, I think I've told this before, but we'll do it on here. Uh, probably the hardest or the one of the better, better games I've ever played in my career. We played. Melbourne, down at Melbourne, I think it would have been 13, and uh, they just had a whole heap of pill. They had us on our line. We defended so well. It ended up going into extra time, and uh, I, I, uh, I charged down the footy. Cooper Cronk went for a field goal. I was proud of myself to be able to like, – I played the full 90 minutes mm. of the – because it obviously went to extra time, I played the full full 90 minutes. So I was just happy to be out there, come up with a big effort for the team, and I charged the footy down. And I just remember looking like I was fucking gassed. I was gassed. And, and everyone obviously is. I think we had maybe three or four players in our team, in our own team, that made over 40 tackles in that game. So it was, it was a crazy, crazy performance from us in particular. But I looked at Cam Smith – and obviously he's played the, the whole 88 yeah. minutes up until that point as well. And it's like it was the first minute of the game. It was like – And that rocks you, eh? It has and, to. Mate, and it fucking proper rattled me. I'm looking – I'm playing with, um, you know, the names that were with me yeah. in 2013, some guys that played for the country and, and Origin. And I remember looking at him and going, like, yeah, he's the, that's why he's the GOAT and that's why he's next level. This is – it seems like it's kiddies for him. Yeah, it was and only it's only it was only a club game. I think it might have been early in the mm. year, like round ten or whatever. But but that would be games every every mate, storm. His breathing and wouldn't have blown out a candle. Like that's how that's how relaxed and and calm he was. So uh, I did. We did an episode with Finchie that we might be airing today as well. Yeah, a little bit later on, and and you know obviously Finchie speaks so highly of him. So definitely, um, that's me. That's me. Uh, Cam Smith story. Uh, who's your favourite NRL club, Sco? Favorite NRL club, I cop a lot of stick for this, so I thought I'd put it in. Obviously, had uh, there's only Parramatta and and Manly, and obviously the the years at Parramatta were tough, and able to play in the GF. Uh, so I know what a few of the boys are going through. You know, some of the some of the young Penrith players. When you get the opportunity, it's it's hard not mm. to to um, have a certain uh, love affair with that team. All right, next one. If Ivan rocks Aaron Williams jacket, to Penrith wing like Johnny Lang. So yeah, I love these questions. Like these, yeah. these are the ones I really look forward to. There's a few serious ones, and then most of the random questions are my favourites. Uh, I've been on the Panthers for a minute. I've been uh, talking them up for a couple of months. I thought momentum, mate. If Ivan rocks that Aaron Williams jacket, go. It's fucking goat. It's game over. I don't even have to watch the game. I think I might just go collect. Yeah. Um, 
on a bet that I didn't put on. <laughs> Excuse but, me. But, um, yeah, um, if he rocks that, I, one bet I did put on, I think we'll get to it. I'll, I'll, I'll answer the, um, ask that question yeah, now. Yeah. The, it's the Clive Churchill. Yeah, your next one. So about cut. six weeks ago, I put um, money on the Prez and Cleary. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I, uh, so um, uh, that's aged well. Yeah, that's good. Definitely. I've, I've hedged b- both bets. Um, what were they saying at the time? Both boys have come in. I got. I think I got Cleary at seven fifty. That's good. And he's four fifty now. And I got. I got the Prez at maybe fifteens. And yeah, I think wow. he's into like tens or nines now. So What's up? they're gonna have. They're gonna have. What's up, baby? Prez. Mm. But uh, like I said before, that that fucking bit about Cam Smith never winning a Clive Churchill. If he's, they love a storyline somehow. If he's, if he's close himself. to it, for sure they're gonna give it to him. So. Um, right, off the NRL, into your races. Yep. I uh, got the Cox Plate tomorrow. What wins? Cox Plate on Saturday? This yes. Is, uh, oh, sorry, yeah. Yep. yep. So just having a look through um, the form here on my phone. The two favourites, Russian Camelot and Acadia Queen, Pikey and Oliver, they've been going head-to-head in, in the last couple of races. Um, Acadia Queen got it in, in the last start, but – we'll probably – is this the one where you've put the this survey is, in the SPC? Not yet. I haven't. We haven't done it yet, but we will tomorrow in the Perfect. SPC. But I don't mind Armory. The um, I think he added that to the question as well. I don't mind Armory. I think it's an, you know it's an overseas horse. Those overseas horses tend to race pretty well at long distance. I, I was on the punt and, and many a time over at Ascot and, and watching those races in the UK and those those can't just run forever. So. Yeah, fuck. Um, I think it's you know it's only it's only two thousand meters, but it's you know it's not the Melbourne Cup. Like that's where I, I love getting on overseas horses in the Melbourne mm-hmm. Cup, but still, um, yeah, I think I might have a little play on Armory, and then I will also have a play on what we select in right. the uh, for the for the degenerates. Yep. We're all getting together for that at the moment, which mm-hmm. is um, which is good. All right, next one. Any jam for the Manicato? So yeah, that's a, that's the night before. That's a another decent race as well. We'll get that up. That's tomorrow. Where's that? Um, that's at Mooney Valley again. Yep. Um, yeah, so you got like trekking, a few of these horses. I to be actually, I wasn't sure if I was going to do a poll for this, but I might get it up as well because there's some uh, some good horses. The Pikey's on dirty work. I, I always end up back in Pippi. Um, I backed her a few times, one last start as well. So um, I think I might have a little play on Pippi in that. Mm. Next one. Yep. Where is the jam coming for the SPC, man? Enough's enough. Hey, you've collected See, a lot for yourself, mate. Yeah, um, the the S the SBC was in a bad way. Luke. It was. Uh, we we did pro- we, we didn't admin. provide jam, and there's there's been a, there's been a, a lot of name calling. There's been a lot of the, there's been a lot of lemon emojis. I was going to say the lemons are on yeah, fire. I've moment. been copping lemon emojis for the last six weeks, uh, which is a bit harsh considering that I probably only had the one week where yeah. I actually provided the jam. Two. Yeah. No, the, there was one week where I put up two. Oh right, yeah, yeah. And I yeah. went, and, I, and to be fair, I went over from two, so I deserved it mm-hmm. on that night, and and I'll and I'll gladly cop the lemons. Yeah, you pulled it back strong. Yeah, and then so like on on the other occasions, I'm I'm trying to like get the team together. I'm trying to get degenerates involved. The leadership group it hasn't been working for the boys. To be fair, you know, the boys have been a bit distracted as well. Mm. You know, present. And Cleary have been part of a you know bit big busy building. at the moment. Yeah, they're a bit busy at the moment, so maybe they haven't been put in there. For, I'm not pointing fingers. I love no. I love the leadership group. It all falls back on me. I'm always accountable for my actions. It's what every every leader, every skipper, and co- coach should be about. So I think everyone should be getting excited for the off season. Yeah, for sure. There's going to be um, there's going to be some. Um, I, th- I think because because it sucks. Like it's hard because with the spring carnival, you think like everyone loves punting around that mm. time, but they're the best horses. Like the best horses are racing, so it's yeah. so hard to pick a race. Yeah, it, I, I wouldn't be surprised if something wins. You know, anywhere between consistently tens to twenties around this mm. month, around this time because there's so many good horses. But uh, so what's you know the what? kitty at for the SPC? What are we at? I think we're at but, ten grand. You topped it up with six. Yeah, so um, it's down about seven. The, six. So the jam was provided, but that was due to a new little tactic that I that I took. Yep. I, I invited the degenerates to get involved. They were ripping into me, so I flipped it back on mm-hmm. them. I said, all right, I'm not providing the jam for you. Degenerates, give me your best. And uh, they come up with very elegant, uh, and then it just got the job done. Yeah, it topped the, it back up. It topped it back Started up. Started at two, everyone, so that's not yeah. decent. Decent yeah. little ride. Yeah. Um, what was your state like after very elegant, speaking of that? 
Yeah, so I probably – I just got a, I got a bit sloppy. Um, sloppy, sloppy yeah, scope. I got a bit – I turned into sloppy scope because I was I was just sitting at, <laughs> sitting at home by myself. I went and caught up with one of my mates in Coogee early on the day and, and had, you know – A couple. A couple and then and then cruised home. So, yeah, just a couple. And uh, and then I treated myself. I had a couple of bottles of red left over, yeah. organic. In the coffee mug, I love it. Was in the a co- coffee mug? Yeah, it's like a it's like a hybrid. Yeah, right. it's, you know what? It's <laughs> it's it's so good. Like it washes so well. It, Bit of everything. We, if if anyone comes out, if you know what, I'll invite a few degenerates over one day to one the kennel. Day. They're knocking. But if anyone knows anything about our pad, it's like a it's a very it's very much a bachelor pad. It's so rats Definitely. like. Our uh, knives and forks and cutlery and all that shit's just rank. And then obviously that's how that cup is our wine cup, our coke cup, our fucking water cup. So. Oh. Um. <laughs> and then to finish the race, I think there's more. Yeah, this is the last race question. What's your biggest win on the punt? Biggest win on the punt and um, regrettably for the degenerates was that uh, that quaddy I hit the other week um, yeah, easily. Gone. I think the la- – the, you can tell by your reaction with the whoa, whoa. yeah, I was in shock. Like, yeah. I yeah, that's that's obviously you know, I because I, the thing is with the punters club, I don't like to bet consistently. I prefer to like find a few things that I like and then have a, like a bit of a decent mm-hmm. lick on it. Like, I'm betting around two fifty five hundred, but I won't bet every race. Um, so sometimes those sort of, sorts of plays pay off because you know if you can hit it, you can hit it. Uh, I think before that, probably my. My biggest win would have been when Prez gave us that tip at Townsville the, <laughs> yeah. only like three months ago. So there's plenty of punning to be happening in the SVC. Plenty. So um, we'll see if we can fucking get a, another couple of big ones. What do we got next? All right, to the NFL where Scope does his best work. Uh, this is how it all the started, the Scope, didn't it? I know, it did. The old NFL podcast, still around. Um, thoughts on Bucks versus Packers? Um, very disappointing. It's a typical oh, – not typical, but this happens – I feel like – last couple of years where once we get behind and sort of like when it's a legit contender, last year was the 49ers for us that smacked us a few times. When we play, you know, these sorts of teams and uh, they can sort of just get after us with their front four. They, they were creating so much pressure. And Aaron, Aaron just looked lost. We looked lost for Lloyds. Like the game plan didn't look that great. To be fair, I watched it back. I watched the replay because I watched it live and then I went and watched the replay. And in the first quarter, we were dominating them. Like yeah, Aaron Rodgers was making some plays on his feet, and and you know we were getting some crosses. But then they I feel like the Bucks switched from um, uh, they were playing man, and they flipped into the zone, which caused a fair few dramas because I feel like we we're beating them one on one with some of our some of our weapons. Like Devonta Adams was back and, and started pretty well, but even uh, Brady looked a bit rattled. Like he was blowing up at his offensive line and. Um, carrying on a bit. So before Rogers threw that pick, I think we're, I thought we we're in a good position. And you know, obviously, it's the NFL, NRLs. You know, there are so many things that are the variables that go into what could happen in a game. And I thought that momentum flip that Rogers did um, just didn't set us up well. And then we just never recovered from it. And like I said, we seem to be like that against um, some of the genuine contenders uh, in the NFC at the moment. So, which is disappointing. Yeah. I think there's a Jordan Love question, so we'll get to that too. We'll, um, <laughs> Sup, Mello? Yeah, yeah and, um, Russ for MVP. He's been killing it. Yep, Russ is uh, well and truly uh, the leader for MVP at the moment. Um, not not Rogers was part of that he conversation. Started, yeah, that before first before four the weeks, weekends. Yeah, so he, he would have been it? in the top four. Uh, Josh Allen was a part of that conversation before the last couple of weeks. The only one that's probably going to give him any threat. Is my boy Paddy that I mm-hmm. that I declared at the start of the year, but even he's looked a bit shaky in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the Seahawks coming off a bye week. Let's see how they go. Um, I think they're one of two or three teams still undefeated. Mm-hmm. Then Pittsburgh and and one more that's escaping me at the minute. But um, yeah, well and truly uh, deserves to be front runner for MVP um, at the moment. Um, back to your Packers, Jordan Love. Does he deserve a shot? No, not yet. Not yet. No, I just there's a. Okay. Uh, it's still, there's still, um, I think even a, a year or two away. I'd like to, just because of the contract situation, I don't think they'll. There's no, there's not panic stations on that Bucks game. I think we'll beat most of, most of the teams that we're supposed to beat throughout the year, but whether the Bucks start to create a gap and the Seahawks, they're probably going to be two of the teams that are going to be thereabouts at the end of the year. Um, the team's still good enough. Devonta Adams' first game, no reason to panic. Rogers had an off day. Lafleur had an off day. They'll be right. Have you watched Rogers with Pat yet? 
the video that he does yeah. straight after the game. Yep. He's talking about the shit talking and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, with Ndomukin Sue. I like, fuck, I hate him, bro. We've had some – Ndomukin Sue used to play for the Lions and he, him and um, – he talk, uh, Rogers and Sue talked about the interaction. Yeah, and how good's that? I think uh, Rogers give him a little bit. Oh, I'll, I'll see you after the game, and then yeah, Sue, yeah. Sue was talking about like maybe punching on, and I Rogers know. is like, "Man, we just need to talk this out." Yeah, just give me three minutes. I have my three minutes. You have your three minutes, <laughs> and then we split. Uh, that's uh, that's that's you and money next year, but we won't go into that now. Yeah, uh, Baker um, issue in Cleveland, pretty rough this week. The that's all right. Baker issue yeah. in Cleveland. Yeah. Um, no, I just think I just think that's probably with regards to the performance against the Steelers on the weekend. Mm-hmm. I think it's more the Steelers are a good team, and that's where Cleveland are. I think they're a good team. They're they're going to be you know thereabouts. They're in a hard division. I think you know like on the AFC side, the Steelers look like that they're because I declared you know Ravens and Chiefs to dominate that mm-hmm. side of it. You've got the Titans that are playing. I think they're the other undefeated team, Titans. Titans and Steelers are going to be thereabouts. AFC is so much better than the NFC. Um, but the Steelers are just looking good, man. That's like mm. that's what I took out of that game. Um, they just – their defense was already that good last year. Um, they had second and third string quarterbacks playing for the Steelers last year. And just – Roethlisberger is probably, you know, not back to his elite best like he was a few years ago, but just doing enough, mm. making a few big throws a game. They've had a few guys emerge. Mm. Um, that Chase Claypool looks like a real player for them. Um, Juju's – they've got Juju. James Connors running the ball heaps better and not banged up like he mm-hmm. was last year. So I think that Cleveland performance is more indicative of just how good Pittsburgh are rather than yep. – and Cleveland just like, that's Cleveland. Are they the GOATs at drafting wide receivers? Yeah, so what? You go back and look at look over the years, Chase Claypool now – um, James Washington's been like, he's been pretty nice for him, but obviously Juju in the second round they mm-hmm. like it in the second and third round. That's the thing; like they don't overdraft. Mm-hmm. They even got Antonio Brown in like the fifth or sixth round that, yeah. back in the day. Um, Santonio Holmes, some of these plays they've done a really good job over the years. Uh, it's hard, yeah. Probably you know, Packers were regarded as you know one of the better teams at drafting. We had like Randall Cobb, Adams, Jordy Nelson, all these guys in the second and third round. So, uh, but yeah, you'd have to put Steelers right up there. Yeah, all right. Uh, the big card, Sunday's going to be mad. UFC in the morning. It's yep. on UAE time, so it's an early start. Yep. And obviously the GF in the grand um, later on in the day. Um, what are your thoughts, your random thoughts on the UFC? I want to flip that, this back to you. You and um, you and Jack, I love your UFC. I yep. watched a bit of the, the build-up the other day, so I've got my thoughts mm-hmm. on it, but what do you reckon? Uh, as in the main fight, because there's um, we've yep. got Ty on the card as well. He needs yep. a win. He's Rob headlining. Whittaker. Yep, Robbie Whitaker versus Cannoneer. All right, go through go through those three main ones. So with Ty, yeah, he's I had can't. a fair bit of time off, and you've been training. Yeah, with him I think head. the best thing that when Ty came in, it would have been what twelve months ago yep. now. I was just I chatted him for like twenty minutes, and he'd just come off that loss. Yep, and he's like, I need to change everything. He was telling me he started talking to DC at the time. Then that materialized. So he's been over in the US. He's taking his training camp over there. He needs this win. You can't go that long in the division without um, getting a win. So da- otherwise, Dana will just cut you. So um, he needs a big performance. We, we were talking in the office the other day. How trim is he looking? Yeah, looking really good. Uh, obviously, yeah, those those um, that change of scenery and that's done mm-hmm. him good. He's he must be he must be working his ass yeah. off, man. Like DC. Yeah, so that. I'll back him there. Um, Cannoneer gun. Yep. Um, Whitaker. I think Whitaker came off the fight with Till, and then he's got this fight, and then this fight here, he'll go. If like um, Stylebender's called out the winner of this fight, pretty okay. much. Yeah, gun. So, that oh, fight with Till was fucking gun too, man. Mad. That was a, a mad clinic. Like mm-hmm. you know, I'm not into the UFC as much as. Everyone else, but fuck, that was a good like tactical battle. Like yeah. they fucking banged each other, mm. man. And that's what I love about Whitaker too. That's why he's smart, like yeah. that. But that just shows the level of Stylebender as well. Like Whitaker's got that IQ. Whitaker before he fought Stylebender, he came off a long loss, and then he had all the dramas with his kid before. Um, no one really talks about that. I think if he's got a couple of fights against him going up against Stylebender, I think the second fight will be much better. Yeah. I still think Stylebender just gets him as much as I love Rob Whitaker. Um, but yeah, I hope Whitaker gets through Cannon here just for that fight because yeah, that'd be by the time, do you reckon he'd take the, the, the nerves that will be out of it a little bit too? Like I think the, so. Cause the way he approached it, it looked like fucking so yeah. tense. Yeah. He's, yeah, so he smashes. He does it every fight, but it just he looked like he had a bit of extra GST in it. Is, is he looks like he brings the, he brings that out in most fights. It's a bit like how Connor used to do mm. it. Like, yeah, 
Without, I remember like you look going back to the old day days when he just got him fired up so much and he knew it was going to come out. And just he rocked him, bang, thirteen seconds. Um, and then the main fight, Khabib versus Gaethje. I reckon this would be one of the best fights. Gaethje can bang. He's also a very good wrestler. Yeah. So when you're reading articles about, it was in the in the press conference yesterday. It was a really good question. The guy from the Mac Life. Um, I think his name's Oscar. He asked Khabib, what's the difference between Russian wrestling and American wrestling? And he's like, Russian wrestling, we just don't stop. Yeah. You look at um, um, Khabib brought up uh, DC in his uh, versus uh, uh, the heavyweight champ, Mercic. Um, yeah, Stipe. He goes, Stipe. Stipe. He goes, what happens? Stipe, um, he goes for the shot. DC tries to bring him down. Yeah. And then you can't get him. He's like, yeah. Dagestan wrestling, we're not stopping. Yeah, yeah. We're getting you down there and we're going to maul you. Yeah. So I think I just can't look past Khabib. I think he's going to be so motivated losing his dad to yeah. Corona. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure it was Corona. Um, I think he's just going to be too much for Gaethje. Gaethje's just got to clip him early. Yeah. Otherwise, Khabib will just be all over him. That's what I think. I think it'll turn out more like Khabib versus um, – Ally Quinta. Yeah. I think that's how the fight will look. It wouldn't surprise me if it goes late. I think Ally Quinta took him to a decision. Um, that could be a bit of jam for the yep. SPC because yep. I just think Gaethje is so good and he has that little bit of wrestling to combat him. He knows as soon as he gets to the fence, he's fucked. Yep. So he's, he's got to be skillful enough to try and keep it in the center of the octagon and then try and bang with him as much as he can. Yep. But I think Khabib's just going to – overpower him and he's just got he's just like that video of him years ago swimming upstream yeah like he's just he's not he's not normal i watched the uh what, what are they what's is it embedded, embedded. you see embedded yeah a little and i watched that um after watching that obviously not, not been watching you know the main fights mm. over the years i've never been so confident in a bet in my life mm. i think like i think khabib's gonna maul him eh? mm. it's, but he's just like it's like it's not like he's cocky He's just humble. So, he's humble and so assured himself, mm. and honestly, doesn't even look like. Yeah. Ga- Gaethje seems in a good spot too. It's and you know what? Like when you watch these things, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Mm. But I feel like, I feel like Khabib's going to maul him, and maybe you know, just I don't know. I don't know. Like I don't think his head just looks too fucking hard and tough, like weathered. Mm-hmm. Like I don't think Gaethje's going to fucking clip him and knock him out. I think uh, he might just get, keep getting after him and, and sort of just. Mm. Get him, choke him out in the in the second or third. Well, Connor, that's that, everyone's like striking versus wrestling. The difference yeah. between this fight, Gaethje can bang, yeah, but can, then he has it on the floor yeah, as well. So as he's well. got that American got base, wrestling base, base where Connor, that's not quite his world. You can train with Dylan Dennis all you want, but that's only going to get you so far. Yeah. Um, next question: Top four in the Premier League. Yeah, interesting so start this, to so the season. Is, yeah, there. we're both we're both in for this too. Um, I'll get you in for this. I'm just going to. Quickly get it up. I had it. Was the English? Did you see the Liverpool Everton game on the weekend? Yeah, two all draw. Mm, right um, in the end, and we, nearly and we pipped it too. Yeah, um, and that was a pretty 50 50 call at the end. I, it, I missed went, it. Went to, I went to the, VAR or whatever. Yeah. I seen the highlights for it. Um, and we, it lost, like a, we lost Virgil. Yeah, I know. Big injury because our defense hasn't been that great to start. Like that was, you know, when when things started to change for Liverpool over the last couple of years, is um, obviously with the big three, the, the big three up 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 the middle, but. Obviously, when we got Allison come over, mm. finally fucked that off. Boosted um, a little bit, and then Virgil. Yeah, but Virgil. we've lost Allison. Yeah, lost Virgil. Yeah, we got through Ajax this morning in yep. the Champions League. One-nil. That's a good win. But I think we've made Liverpool's made some really good signings. Bring in Yota, yep. um, Minamino, the yep. the guy that they brought in late last yep. year. He's going to play more Ozzie of a Mino, role. Scopey Mino. Scopey Mino. <laughs> <laughs> What's he mean? When because uh, all my mates from um, yeah. Wakey, a few of the boys that love yeah. the Premier League, yeah. when when he signed, they yeah. send me and they go, "Oh, congrats! Because <laughs> you, you've done well since the Cats. <laughs> everything, everything Asian yeah. I cop all the time." But um, some surprise packages. Obviously, Everton, Carlos Ancelotti has got them absolutely yeah. fiery at the moment. James yeah, Rodriguez Aston Villa, for them. Leicester, Aston Villa, Aston Villa. They touched up Liverpool seven two. Fuck. So they've. I think they're all riding the wave of the Grealish re-signing. That was really big for them. And they've then they're not a team like when they've got a few good players everywhere, yeah. which they do at the moment. I couldn't name the the rest of the squad, yeah, but yeah. I should because I've got a couple of them in my fantasy team. But yeah, I just think for the city, don't look that great either. Well, city eleventh. I'm just looking at mm. it now. Obviously, they've uh, they've sort of they fell off the wagon the back end of last year's Premier League season, and. Um, around the Champions League too, like it wasn't that great for them. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how that all 
how it plays out. It's sort of it feels like it's just somehow automatically balanced. All the money that coming into the Premier League, yep. I think is great. Like Liverpool obviously ran away with it last season, yep. but I think still the gap is closing up. Whereas there's so much more quality across the the twenty teams in the Premier League. Yeah, um, I wish I wish I, you know, I need to watch more of it. To be fair, I haven't. Um, the best is the Optus mini match. So you wake yeah. up in the morning, you just make sure you don't see any scores, and you yeah. got like twenty minutes of like they do at the NFL. You know how they just condense it into yeah. one. Yeah. So I I like doing that if yeah. I can't stay up to watch it. Um, otherwise, I feel like I'm watching sport twenty four seven in this life. Mm. Um, player that you wish that you played with. Uh, that that's a guy who came and did the, his first podcast with Finchy. Brad, Brad Fittler was my favourite player growing up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I got a bit of, bit of time to be around him when I was in the juniors at the Roosters and just like the way he carried him. So you can see the way he talks, like how confident, like how much Even of a leader he is. Even someone like Finchy's in awe of him. Yeah. So that shows that, – that was going to be, you know, another point that, you know, some of the names that were around during those years, like Finchy, Rico, Minnie, some of the other guys that have been on and uh, – He's just like got that aura about him. I feel like, and then he was my favorite player as well. So, when I was a young kid growing up, we both played at Cambridge Park. Yeah. So he he was well, he was a Cambridge it. Park junior. I started at St Clair and then went over to Cambridge Park, and then from that point on, Dad had finished playing footy, and then I started. It's weird, like when my dad retired, I started getting into footy more, and then found out that Brad Fittler had played, mm-hmm. and then at that time he was playing at the Roosters. So I was like, that was my team. That was my uh, he was my guy. Uh, what have we got? Is Barcelona Beach Club really the goat? So the boys. So I, I think this question comes from our boys at Two Five Seven Collective. I think they were. I watched their podcast last night. Shout out to those boys. Uh, they were talking about Barcelona. They went on a world tour last year, and I think they went to Barcelona. So he must have been watching that. They were talking mm-hmm. up Barcelona mad. I think the like the, those boys would have had fucking obviously an unreal trip. But you, when you go at the end of the season, it's a little bit different to when you're right in the guts of summer. Mm. Because a lot of the be- the mad beach clubs shut down. If you ever get a chance to go over there and you go during summer, I did some of my best work at Hula Hula Bar Ooh. in Croatia. Gone. Yeah. Fuck. It's just a proper vibe. Like, how do you? You know what? You just you just happy when you're there. Uh, we went to, we we went there for my mates Bucks. That was part of a trip last year, and we were in Havar for four nights, five nights, and we went four out of the five nights and just. <laughs> We got we got table serviced every day, um, every because the thing is with with those Croatian um, with the islands over there they've got those what do they call it like the the tours or whatever. Yeah. So every day you've got a new batch of people coming in. So they have the tours. They come and do mm-hmm. a var, then they fuck off and go to Dubrovnik, yeah. and then they go to somewhere else. So even though we went there every like four days, it's not like when you're stuck. Just say if you're at Bali and you see the same same people at like Mississippi or um, at the lawn or something like that, where, where you know everyone tends to go. So. Fresh coming through. Best. Of course. Fresh. Some of your best work. <laughs> you're going to say fresh meat, weren't you, mate? <laughs> you pulled up on the meat bar. <laughs> I did. I'm on a podcast. Um, how many days will the SPC party go for? Ooh, we just need to get that first day on. And yeah. like just I give said, us one day. Yeah, we just we said this. I, I, um, I said in the SPC, I really want to get this on. I'm, I'm working hard to get this on. But the thing is, mm. I've committed to about – you know, me and Luke, you've looked mm. through before. We've got about 100, 100 OGs. There's originally 35. There was – once we started getting the SPC going, that turned into about 100. And then I want to reward probably about 10 to 15 that have been putting in consistent jam. They mm. might not have been there from day one, but want to get there. So we're looking – I think we might – the numbers might be anywhere between 100 to 120. Mm-hmm. Very hard to book a venue for that at the moment. And then also some, some of them from out of state. So if we get people from, you know, I've got, I know I've got a – um, a lot of support down in, in Melbourne with the SPC. Some of the guys said that's, that's all they been, got at the moment. Yeah, they got that's all they got at the moment. They listen to to the podcast and whatnot, and so we'd love to get them up. We can't pay for them, but what we would do is if if they get the flight up, um, we're going to take care of everything. That kitty that we've got in the SPC at the moment, it's currently at ten grand. Yeah, um, that that kitty's all going to our big piss up, so that's going to hire the venue, fucking free piss. Like you, like we said, we, we're going to look after you. If you can get to us, we'll look after you. Yeah, it was sad. We couldn't do we wanted to do this weekend. That was the initial yeah. plan for it. I had to push it back. Um, but, yeah, once it happens, it'll happen and it'll be gone. It'll be gone. Uh, who's better, the old boy or Scope? 
the old boy, easy. Um, and this is not even trying to be humble and say less. Uh, the old boy played for the Kiwis. Me, me and the old, it's a funny one. Me and my old man, because my for, that, for those that don't know, my old boy played for Parramatta, the Warriors in Western Suburbs back in the day as well. Uh, we both played exactly 120 games. No way. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Like that's something we got. And we both debuted round three. He, he debuted against Belmain Tigers. I debuted against West Tigers. Yeah. So we've got a bit of like a cool alignment that, that goes there. But Dad played for the Kiwis. I think he played like 15 or 20 tests. Yeah. But he never played finals footy, though. Know? So, <laughs> so there's like, the balance? Hey, it's very balanced between us. But I'm going to give – mate, he got the opportunity to, to represent the black and white. So, yeah, the old boy's got me there. Oh He's got proper status back in New Zealand. Who's your best uh, Mad Monday? No, so so what oh, was my best? best oh yeah, so my best. Oh, Mad mate, Monday. interrupted me. So yeah. best Mad Monday that you've ever had. Fucking Uber Uber drivers coming in here like that. Uber Eats. I haven't even ordered yet. Surely give us some food. Um, my best. So my best Mad Monday was uh, my second year of Catalans, and this like might sound funny, but this is we played in the relegation game, and it, for people that don't know, that game is if the intensity of it is is just off a grand final. Like there's so much nervous energy going into that game. We ended up having, uh, we ended up beating Lee, and it was like it's it's a weird it's a weird moment because the club I was moving on next year, but potentially the club could have got relegated to championship. So when we won that, it was like we fucking mm. celebrated like we'd won a won a uh, won a GF, and uh, I fucking did a number. Of, speaking of <laughs> Barcelona, I did a proper number of myself. Um, even got a punch, got in a punch up with one of the Frenchies. <laughs> that was gone. How'd you go? We, uh, no, nah, not good. He, he, got, he got him first. Normally, I like to get, normally yeah. I like to get him first, but he cracked me. I tried to go after him. A couple of the boys broke it up. Yeah. I was given, so I was in a mood. It was day three or day two or whatever, yeah. or whatever. And I was and I was pissing on one of the young Frenchies who who I love. Yeah. But uh, I was I was given a little bit too yeah. much, and um, one of the other older Frenchie boys took a, took offence to it, and, and he cracked me. <laughs> And I was, oh. and I. This is this is right down in Barcelona Beach. Mm. He cracked me, and I tried to get him. By the time I tried to get him, it, it had broken up. But the best thing about, and this is what I talk about all the time, after it was all done, he said enough. Was it like fucking stop picking on the young kid? I did. I didn't realize I was going too far. Yeah. And then we just sat and fucking got on the piss, and we all just God. like you know what I mean. Yeah. And then we kicked on. But that that lasted like two or three days. That one. It started in England. We had our first beer in England. So the, the best thing about this it's a Mad Monday, had our first beer in. Um, in England, we played at Lee at their home ground, drank on the plane, partied in France that night, and then we got a bus down to Barcelona. So that Mad Monday went to three different countries. So uh, that's as good as it gets. Uh, start, bench, cut. Here we go. Beers, punting, and footy. Beers, punting, and footy. So beers, start, beers. I love having like – Having yeah. a, for me, when, you, when you're on the start. beers, even if you're having a beer at home by yourself, I love having a beer. I love having a drink. Generally, when I'm having a beer, I'm with my mates, so uh, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take beer. Or, or I'm having them after a game of footy. And uh, so footy, footy would be bench. Mm. Um, I had some good years playing footy, but, uh, and I'd cut punting if I could. <laughs> but I can't. You can't. <laughs> I can't. So. The skipper's trying to get out. <laughs> Mate. If, if I could, if I could just skip at the group without fucking doing a number of myself, yeah, there's some good stories, but there's probably more bad ones. I'm like I keep saying, I'm the OG degenerate. I go through some bad slumps, man. So if I could cut the pun, I would, but I can't. Out of your crew, who's a liability on a bender? So I imagine this is. I've got a few different little crews, um, but I imagine this is targeted towards the YKTR boys. Everyone's everyone's pretty good. I will say, um, the biggest liability when we went to um, ACL. When we were in the States together, we went in 2015. It was pretty much this whole crew, me, me Chico, Normie, Ice, Leary was there, uh, Toddy Wilson, Dave Williams. And, um, yeah, Chico did a number on himself in ACL. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, that, and that entailed me being, being in a pub um, and just trying to – from afar, from a distance, I ended up seeing Chico and I had to fireman's carry him. All the oh, way from one fucking, of those. So we're for p- people that no no. If you haven't been Austin, Texas, it's fucking. It feels like it's it's at least a kilometer long. Mm. They block it off either way. So then they can party in the streets and you can go from bar to bar. And fuck, we were at this pub and it was right in the guts. And I seen Chico getting wrist out. So I went over and grabbed him, chucked him on my shoulder. Fucking fireman's carried him 
to the next cab rank, which ended, fuck, like I said, mm. it was maybe 500 metres, but he was just, he gave me nothing. He was just stiff yeah. and, and dead. So, yeah, he was a liability on that trip, but generally the boy's not too bad. Uh, who's going to be on the back page of the paper on a bender on Tuesday? Hopefully it's me in the prez. <laughs> <laughs> You're infiltrating the camp. Yeah, yeah. I want to, I wanna, mate, we've been... Um, We've been compu- communicating nonstop over the since we've be, uh, started the little bromance. I hope we're doing a number on himself because he's got the Clive Churchill around his neck. He's got a grand final ring. What's up? He said, you know, next time we, we get on the piss, he'll let me wear it for a bit. So oh, if, 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 I, if I end up on the back page with the Prez, Does Wes I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be stoked. As long as, he's not, as, as, long as there's no dramas, they're, yeah. just, they're just happy to see him, the scope and the Prez, potential podcast next year, something like we could get together and do. See what we can do. Do you know they sticking in Sydney or they're straight back up no, to the Goldie? I don't know. No, I haven't spoke to him about that. I've sort of just left him alone this week in particular. Yeah. We, spoke, we, started, we had a little chat at the start of the week, but um, – yeah, good luck to all those boys, man. I'm, I'm fucking. It's such a good weekend of sports again. I'll have a little Get video best. tomorrow highlighting how excited I am. Enjoy the weekend of sport. We'll be back with Q and A Q&A again soon, I reckon. Flow, stay coffee, baby. What's good? What's up?